Welcome back models to episode 3, Modding Classes and Overriding Functions. In this video I'm going to try to teach you to the best of my ability on how to start modding the vanilla classes of Daisy and methods and functions and whatnot, some small tweaks uh, so you basically can get an understanding on how everything works and how you can override things and how you can actually change things because in our last videos we just made an empty mod so this video we're actually I'm going to actually show you how to do something. So for this lesson I've decided to take the uh, death screen and we're going to tweak the text on the death screen a little bit to show uh, a custom message. So instead of saying you are dead it's going to say whatever we want it to say basically. If you've been following along with our last two videos you'll already have your project um, and everything, a template already set up in your P drive. So open Steam, then open your Daisy tools to make sure that your P drive is mounted and you've got a little green Y check here. And then once you've done that, open your P drive and you see the scripts folder. This is all of the Daisy vanilla scripts um, extracted so we can actually read them. So let's open this and the file we are gonna, these are namespaces, remember I taught you about these in the last videos. We're going to be uh, modding something, a script from the four underscore world namespace. So if we go into here, go into the entities folder and find daisy player implement dot C. Open this up in your text editor and just minimize the first two, three, the first three classes until you get to daisy player implement. In this class, scroll down to about line 644 uh, 644 and you'll find this method void show dead screen bool show float duration this is actually what we're going to override here so again remember which class that it was in so scroll back up class daisy player implement Minimize the notepad and then go into our first my first mod project we made in the last video. This is this is going to serve now as a template because we already set everything up here to use the most popular modding namespaces that people use. Uh, there are more, and if you do mod something from another namespace, you're going to have to define it in your class definitions and include it in the dependencies as well. But we just need these. We don't even need, we don't really need the mission or the game, we just need the world. So if you if you want to, you can totally delete game and mission from here as well, and then from here and here. We just need this one. But I'm just going to leave them in because this is now a template for us. So you can copy this and make a backup because we're now going to edit our template to make it actually do something. In the scripts folder, in the four world namespace, create a new text document and name it the class that you're editing. St always stick to the same naming conventions as the vanilla daisy. That way you won't get keep track of things and you won't get confused. So we're going to call our script daisy player implement. I think that's what it was called. And it's a dot C, so always remember to convert it from text to dot C. Otherwise I'll have problems. So because we're going to mod uh, this class here, we need to use a keyword called modded. So copy this or type it out, but I do recommend copying it. That way you won't end up with any spelling mistakes. And I do think capitalization matters in Enforce Script as well. So open and close your brackets. Put the modded keyword in the top. So now we have modded class daisy player implement. And then in here, we're going to find the function that we were modding. What was it? Line 600? No, 644 six, four here. And again, we're going to use another keyword here because we're going to override this method. So copy the top part of the method and paste it in your custom modded class here. And then close the bracket and use the override keyword. So now we're overriding this. Okay, let's move our Daisy Player implement to another view so that we can see both. One on the left, one on the right. This is the vanilla, this is our custom. Uh, now, most times when you override a method, you can have to invoke super. And what that does is that calls the original function so nothing breaks down, you don't need to copy all of the code into your 
custom override method, um, you just need to write what you, exactly what you want to override pretty much. So we're going to do that now. And to do that, we're just going to write the super dot. And then we're going to copy the method that we're invoking here. Open your brackets, put the semicolon on the end. And inside the brackets, you're going to put show and duration. So let's do show, comma, space, duration. Ah, did you see that? I got a spelling error, a spelling mistake there. That's why I always say it's always better to copy in like that. So this is our call to the original method. Most, most times you're going to need to do this. Um, but there are some cases where you won't want to do this or you'll want to do this somewhere else. So more code here and then the super dot show blah, 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 right on the end. Um, and that basically depends on exactly what you're doing. To be honest, there's no, there's no sort of easy way to kind of explain that. For what we're doing, we're going to keep it at the top though. So it calls, so it invokes super first and then it runs through our custom code. If you have a better way of explaining that, definitely put it in the comments because I know that explanation sucks, but uh, I did my best. <laughs> so now that we've called super, we're ready to put in our custom code. And to do that, well, first I've noticed there's a few if defs here. Now, I'm not sure if we need these in our custom override, but I'm going to put them anyway, just in case that we have any problems. And I don't want problems while I'm trying to teach you something. Now we've also got an if statement here, if show and is player selected, we're definitely going to need that as well. So copy that, paste that there, close the brackets. Inside here, we're going to need the, the string message. Yeah, let's have that. And for the message, let's put you so dot, 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 jack in the box. And then I see there's another if def statement here. Not sure if we need it, but I'm going to put it in anyway. And I guess we're also going to take, let me check this line. Oh, yeah, we need this line. And this line and this line. Just clean this up a little bit. I like all my on the same line like that. And I think that's it. No, actually, sorry, that's not it. We need another end after the bracket here. And then close, close. That should be it, really. Uh, let me check. So, a modded keyword for the class override keyword for the method invoke super so that we don't need all the other code and we can just modify exactly what we want put a custom string message variable which is you suck and we've included the if if definitions um, but I'm not really sure if we need them I guess if somebody knows they'll comment and let me know but uh, I've put them in just so we don't have any problems so that's it, click save, and you can close that now. Minimize the notepad, and we don't need our P drive just yet, so we'll just leave it out the way somewhere here. Open up your handy desktop folder we made in uh, the last videos, and open the PBO project application. Make sure the source folder is on your first mod, the project that we made in our last video, and then hit crunch. Hallelujah means that everything is okay. Now, in the folder on our desktop that we made, my first mod with a custom name, open the add-ons, delete the contents. In your P drive, hit exported PBOs, add-ons, copy in the new PBO we just made. Now we are done with the P drive, we can close that. In our handy desk, Daisy desktop folder, we've got DS utils. Let's open that, add a source directory. I taught you all about these tools in the last videos, so I'm going to go through these quickly and I'm not actually going to go into into it if you if you're not sure about the tools and you haven't watched watch my last video so let's sign our PBO file PBO file signed let's publish it again we went over this tool in the last video I'm 
Now that's published, open your Daisy Game Launcher, find the mod, right click on it and hit repair. This will update it in your client side. Now we're going to test it. So if you don't have a private local server for testing stuff on, definitely make one. And I do have a video on how you can make a few of them on your local machine. Just check out my YouTube channel. Uh, private servers, test server, server files. I delete that because I was already testing it. So we've repaired it in the launcher, open the folder and copy it from the workshop folder into your test server. Make sure to get the key, copy the key. We went over keys in the last video, paste it in here. You won't have it, so just put it in here. I already have it. Copy the folder name and open your start server bat file. And at the end of your mods, you'll have CF and VPP admin tools or whatever admin tools you use. CF is, a, I always put that in my test service because most mods like to have that. We're not using it right now, but it's nice to have if we need to test anything that we, we're modding with that needs CF. So put a semicolon on the end, paste it. You don't have a semicolon on the end of the last entry. Hit save. Run the server. Okay, now we're ready to test it because the server is loading now. So to test your mods, you're going to have to have two folders open. First, it's going to be your server config folder or whatever folder you will find your logs in. The next one in your handy Daisy desktop folder, it's going to be the app data, Daisy app data folder. If you don't know where that is, it's C users, your username, app data, local Daisy. And inside here, you're going to find all of your client side logs because you see it's not just the server that you have to check for your errors you've also got to check your client and lots of modders don't do this and when they don't do this it makes them a pretty poor modder because client side and server side code is very different um, so if you have an error that's only on the client side it's not going to post an error in your server logs and you're going to completely miss it it's going to be in your client log or if you have a, if you have an error on the server vice versa. You understand what I mean? So it's very important to have these two folders open while we're testing. So now the server's started. I'm just going to put my parameters in for my local server. Make sure that mods that my server's using are loaded and I'm going to hit play. Okay, so we're in the game. We're going to activate our admin tools and I'm going to teleport somewhere to where it's going to be easy to kill myself. So let's go to Chernogorsk. I'm sure there'll be a high building here that I can jump off of. Okay. Ah, oh, there's towers. Perfect. So let's teleport us here. Using I use the H key with VPP admin tools. Get out of the free cam, which is a backspace key, I think. Unless I changed it, I'm not sure. Right, let's just go all the way down. <laughs> there it is. You suck, Jack in the Box. So now that we've found that it's working, we can exit, close our game, close the server, and now we'll start with the logs, okay? We need to check to make sure that there's no errors. So first, in your servers, server configs, open up your script. And these are errors with other mods, not with our mods. So we don't need to worry about this. And it looks like everything's run fine in the script log. The RPT, we don't really need to go into that because uh, the script log is a filtered version of that, basically, and it shows our scripts. Let's move on to the client side um, now, and notice we've got a crash log here. Now, if you ever get a crash log, you definitely need to open it and check out what's going on and solve that issue. Um, sometimes you'll have uh, passive errors from other mods that you don't really need to worry about, uh, or that it's... Uh, someone else's responsibility to fix and all you can do with those is report them to the mod developer for him to have a look at so we'll open this and just as I thought it's VPP admin tools so there's a 
null pointer to instance generated in my crash log. It's nothing to do with our custom mod, so we'll just ignore that. There's one error log here as well. Now inside the error log on the client side, you'll notice we have uh, E and W. Now these mean errors and warnings. Uh, errors, bad, warnings, not really so much to worry about. Um, but it's, it's nice not to have them. If you see anything to do with your mod in here, pay attention. There's already an error here, but that is with VPP admin tools, not our mod. I do see one here, my first mod. This is an animation error. Now we don't need to worry about this, skeletons, anim, XML, because our mod is not doing animations. Um, so, And it seems that VPP admin tools, CF, and every other mod is also having this report. So looking at this, we can safely ignore ignore this because it's it's nothing that we can change ourselves it, we didn't do anything wrong this is just um, this is just how Daisy works sometimes so everything in here is fine no errors to our mod and we've tested it in game it's working uh, check your scripts log as well same thing like we talked about on the server side script log everything's fine in here and always clear them as well it's always nice to keep it clear, otherwise they build up and you have gigs and gigs and gigs of logs and you just don't need it. So that's it. I hope you found the video helpful. Subscribe if you want to have more Daisy content like this and I'll definitely make some more. I am also working on some Patreon videos which will go a lot more in depth on uh, Daisy UI modifications. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do things like uh, main menus, custom in-game hoods, you know, so like player uh, stats, health, blood, all that kind of cool stuff, uh, loading screens, escape menus, and basically any other type of UI modification you can think of. There'll be all kinds of in-depth tutorials for that on my Patreon channel. Thanks for watching episode 3. I hope what I've showed you has helped you to understand a little bit more about how you can make your custom edits and stuff for Daisy. In episode 4, I'm going to go into how you can mod other mods, so definitely check that out. Thanks for watching and happy modding.